So when you relax into mental samadhi, your body gets nourished as well. The tensions get released in different ways. You digest your food better. You sleep better. You think more clearly. You don't get as agitated by whatever, by whatever happens. All of those things any doctor will tell you are good for your body. So in that way too, you experience the food or the nourishing or rejuvenative power of samadhi. In the Nyingma tradition, I've been talking about the Kajus a lot, in the Nyingma, the old translation school, uh, one of our great masters, his name was Long Chempa, uh, he composed some very important treatises to our tradition which talk about the quality of ngalso. And ngalso means recovering from weariness, the sense of rejuvenation or restoration, coming to a sense of very deep well-being. It's sometimes called profound ease or the state of profound relaxation. That's what meditation brings. That's the food of samadhi. When the body is freed and relaxed from all of those accumulated tensions and worries and pains and bad mental dietary habits as well as physical dietary habits. And the energy, talking about more advanced levels of Buddhist practice now, the energy flows more freely. You can feel like your body weighs nothing, like you could just float up into the air. The energy flows freely. When the energy flows freely, the mind becomes incredibly clear. All of that energy that gets burned up thinking about all this useless stuff, that energy now can be used for other things, literal, literal energy. So your mind feels more refreshed and awake, and it stays, the attention stays where you put it. And if you think of His Holiness, the 16th Karmapa, you can hold His image in your mind in spectacular detail for as long as you want. And it's not through struggling and strain and from some kind of powerful exertion, but it's from profound relaxation and ease and refreshment and the presence of that powerful mental energy that's not being squandered on other useless things. That's also the food of samadhi. And then on the most subtle level, the food of samadhi is samadhi itself. The food of samadhi is samadhi. What nourishes awareness except awareness? Right? If mind's basic quality is to know itself, is to be self-aware, then the most rarefied or finest, purest essence of food of samadhi is simply awareness resting within itself. That is the state of profound ease that Long Chempa was referring to. It's a very high level of attainment in Dzogchen, in the great perfection tradition. So I've been talking for about 45 minutes, and I think I've said mainly what I wanted to say about meditation as experience, uh, experiential learning, something you can only learn by doing it not by reading any amount of material or having it described to you or watching other people do it. It's working with your own personal experience. What is the test or the measure for whether you are becoming a good cook of samadhi, whether you're learning how to prepare that food well or not? Well, remember I said the opposite of that, the opposite diet is this fast food diet, uh, the junk fast food diet of all the other thoughts and emotions that we invest all this energy and belief in. So if you see a true reduction in your own life in those kinds of disturbances in how you respond or react to situations, then it means you are uh, mastering the culinary art. <laughs> of samadhi, you are making some progress. If you don't see that, then it's time to check back in with your teacher and see what might be going wrong. 
people can say, oh, I've been meditating for 20 years and I've not seen anything. This stuff doesn't work. It's all BS. What is that 20 years? Is it 24 hours a day of resting in the nature of mind? And no. It means, maybe, someone spent one hour a day, some but not all days, over the course of 20 years, uh, setting aside that time to sit down and slow down their thoughts maybe a little bit and then maybe get a little sleepy and then distracted and then seeing if the time is up yet or not uh, and then uh, or maybe I actually need to finish a little early today because I forgot I have that meeting and I ought to look good for that meeting so I better shave one more time or whatever the thought is. Remember this quality of awareness, this self-awareness, it's like, like self-honesty. It's like dealing with your own mind and your own experience in a very honest way, not blowing things out of proportion, not discounting or disregarding them. When you believe the thought that you have something better to do in that moment than finish your meditation session, then you're not meditating, you're buying into that distorted thought or belief that there's something going on outside your mind that is more important than your mind simply cultivating its own natural quality. So that's where this person, this hypothetical person in my example is going wrong. If you do that for 20 years or 200,000 years, probably nothing will change because the basic point is being missed. So I'll leave you with a recommendation and encouragement to use the practices that you learn here under the wise and experienced tutelage of Lama Surya Das to use that in your lives as best you can and especially to be honest about it with yourselves to see what's, going, what's working and what's not working not to get caught up in all of these judgments and maybe self-criticism or fantasies about how great it's all going to turn out, but being very realistic and very honest about your practice day to day, hour to hour, moment to moment, and see where, where you're messing up and see where you're not messing up and take stock of that and touch base with your teacher or your teachers and use this incredibly valuable skill to benefit yourselves in your lives and to be benefit everyone you come into contact with. So thank you and I will take questions in the remaining time. If there are any. Thank you very much for your thoughtful words. They are being penetrated slowly, I hope. <laughs> Uh, my question has to do with, um, can you talk about meditating in the present moment, you know, on a 24-hour basis, how, how you could describe it? When else would you uh, propose to meditate other than in the present moment? Thank you. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs>